Hey guys, so um, here is the video that I said that I would post for reading today. Last week and this week, you guys have been working on informational text structures in schools PLP. Um, you guys have completed several lessons and then you have a couple more to complete this week. But I did wanna give you just a really quick um, kind of rundown of what text structure is and why it's important and then also just like a concise list of all the text structures that you guys have either finished going through or in the process of going through right now. Um, so basically when we're talking about informational text we spent the very first or the whole first semester um, discussing literary text. So we only read um, fiction at the beginning of this year. Now we're in the second semester of fifth grade and we're gonna be focusing on informational texts, which are nonfiction texts, right? So texts that are about real things, not made up things. Um, and so every time an author sits down to write something, he or she has a purpose for writing. They have a reason um, for sharing what they're deciding to share. So for those of you who have already had small group with me, we read the two texts about um, the pot belly pigs. Those of you have, who are going to have a um, small group with me, we're going to read those texts, but maybe you've already read them. Um, both of those texts are about pot belly pigs, but the author's reason for writing the text is very different, right? So depending on why the author is writing the text, they're going to structure their text or their passage a certain way. Okay, so in your notebooks, guys, I'm going to ask that you copy this anchor chart as we go along. So here's the deal. You can always pause me um, if I'm talking too fast, which I probably will be. Um, if I talk too fast, you can pause me, write down what you need to write down. I know that this isn't like the best setup. So in addition to this video, I'm going to snap a picture of the anchor chart and put it on Dojo. Um, so that you can see it and copy it that way as well. If maybe you're having trouble um, making out some of the words, I'll, I'll put a copy of the anchor chart on Dojo. Um, that is no problem. So the first thing, we're gonna have three sections here. We're gonna have the structure, okay? We're gonna put a definition of the structure, okay? And then we're gonna put some clue words um, or some clues that we should look for as we are reading an informational text, okay? So go ahead and get your anchor chart drawn so that you can fill in, okay? And the very first text structure um, that we're gonna talk about is description, okay? When you see the word description, you should maybe, see, you could maybe see the word describe um, in there, it's similar to describe. So when you're describing something to someone, you're telling them about something, right? You're giving them great detail about something. So if I were to describe for you my uh, fifth birthday party, I might say it was a cold and snowy March afternoon and me and three of my best friends went to Chuck E. Cheese and it was so crowded and so loud inside of Chuck E. Cheese and I remember getting hot cheese and pepperoni pizza and I won a prize and I remember I got a big stuffed animal so I'm describing to you what that event was like right so for our definition it says the text provides details or characteristics of something so we're given details about something right and some clues that we could find in a text would be adjectives remember that an adjective describes a verb so instead of saying there's a chair in my classroom, I may, I may say there's a blue chair in my classroom, right? So an adjective is gonna be describing a noun. Um, characteristics, examples, a mental image. So as you're reading a description text, you should be able to have a very vivid image in your head of what the author is describing, okay? So the first text structure there is description. Remember, pause me if you're not finished writing before we go on to the next one. I don't want you to fall behind. Um, so next is compare and contrast. You guys have been doing compare and contrast probably since you were in kindergarten. I know that you guys have made Venn diagrams before. Um, you tell how two things are alike and then you can tell how they're different, right? 
So in the compare and contrast text structure, it's the same thing. The text talks about similarities and differences between people, places, or things, right? And some clue words that we may find in a compare and contrast text, same, different, both, neither, in contrast, on the other hand, things like that. When we see these clue words, we know right off the bat something is being compared and contrasted. Okay, so our second text structure is compare and contrast. I heard somebody in morning meeting, I think it was, use one of these words chronological, so I know that they've been working through PLP. Our third text structure is like chronological order or sequence, right? You may see it referred to depending how the text is, how the text reads. It could be chronological or sequence, right? But both of those things just mean like time order. So me as a social studies teacher, I teach about 700 years worth of history, right? So it doesn't make sense for me to start with World War I and then talk about the Revolutionary War and then talk about the Dust Bowl and then talk about civil rights. That doesn't make sense, right? In this con the context of our fifth grade social studies, it makes sense to talk about things in a time order, right? Like on a timeline. So the text outlines events in chronological order or list steps in a sequence. So this could also be uh, maybe in science, you have a text in front of you that's outlining how to complete a, um, an experiment, right? So it will say, first, you need to get a bowl. Second, you need to put vinegar in a bowl. Third, you're gonna put baking powder or baking soda in a bowl, right? So those sorts of texts require a certain order or certain steps, right, in order to complete it properly. So some clue words, order of events, right? You may see things like first, second, third, um, things like that. History, when we're talking about history or reading a text about history, it's probably gonna be in chronological order. Instructions, if you wanna know how to make a pie or a cake when you're reading a recipe, it's gonna tell you what to do first, second, third, so on and so forth. It doesn't make sense if you're reading a recipe to start with putting the cake in the oven if you haven't mixed the other, other ingredients together, right? Also years, we see a lot of years in simple solutions. Um, we're asked to put things on a timeline, so that would be an example of chronological order. All right. Our fourth text structure is problem and solution, and it's just that. The author tells us a problem. They don't just leave it at the problem though. They tell us how to solve that problem with the solution, okay? So the text gives information about a problem and gives one or more solutions, one or more ways on how to solve that problem. In those text guys, you're probably gonna see the word problem, solution, issues, um, things like that, okay? So if the author's giving you a problem and then telling you how to solve it, that's an example of problem solution text structure. All right. And the very last one is something that you guys are probably familiar with as well. We have cause and effect. The text describes an event and the events that follow. Okay, so in these passages, you'll see cause, you'll see effect, because, due to, if, then, um, words like that. So if something happens, and then something else happens as a result of the first event, that's an example of cause and effect, okay? So again, pause me, rewind me, whatever you need to do here to make sure that you get um, all the information that you need from our text structure anchor chart. And then I'll take a picture and also put it on Dojo so that you have that as well. And I hope that you guys have an awesome day and I will see you in morning meeting tomorrow.